Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's time to show you some of my favorite new knives that have hit our shelves in the past week. Let's check them out. So the first new knife we've got for you this week is a wooden box. Just kidding. It's what's inside this box that is pretty cool. We've got a new release from MKM, the Maniago Knife Makers. This one made by Viper. And there's several different variations, but this one right here is a limited edition. And this very one that I'm holding actually, we're giving away on our Instagram profile, which we'll leave a link to that post in the description below so you can get in there and enter to win this really cool knife. Now this is a magnetic closure for this limited edition box. So it lifts off very easily. And inside we've got the Timavo is the name of the model. And this is limited to just 100 pieces. So we've actually got a, a routed out section for this knife to sit in. And it actually works when the knife is open too. So that storage case is actually gonna make a great display and there's even a magnet right behind the blade that holds it in place. So you're gonna have no issues propping this up on a shelf. It's gonna look really cool. But the knife itself, I'm very impressed with. Now the standard versions come with M390 steel and you can get them with carbon fiber, G10 or micarta handles or a titanium frame. But this one right here comes with a damas steel blade and a damas steel like looking pattern on the titanium handles. Now most titanium handled knives are frame locks, but this one is actually a liner lock. So you have a nice smooth look on both sides of this handle. On that back side also, we've got a nice milled pocket clip that's inset a little bit into the handles and a nice looking backspacer here at the end that has some nice figuring and some nice contouring going on as well. Now this is a Jesper Vaknea's design and as far as the size goes for my hands, I can get all four fingers on there, but it's kind of a three and a half finger grip. I don't have quite a full hold with my fourth finger. We do have a finger choil here up the front, which is not large enough for my finger to rest fully there. I would be kind of hitting the edge a little bit, but you can definitely get your fingertip up there and control the blade a little more easily. In typical Italian fashion, those surfaces right there on the choil are actually crowned rather than straight. And they've done that to the spine as well. That's something we see a lot from these Italian makers, especially Lion Steel, but it's carried through to a lot of these MKM products, which are made by a few different manufacturers. Overall, it makes the knife look nicer. It's, it's just a little, it's a little bit better. Feels a little more comfortable, is interesting to look at. So it's pretty cool. Now, depending on which model you get, these start at just under $200. We're about $198 on some of the uh, Micarta versions, and we're up to $599 on this limited edition. I know that's a lot of money for some, but this is definitely an awesome piece. It's definitely gonna be collectible, but if it's still outside your budget, make sure to go over to our Instagram profile, to that post, and get your chance to win this knife. Again, link in the description for that. So next up is another limited edition knife. I'm gonna load them up here at the front. And this is a new Benchmade bug out. And you can instantly see this is not like any other bug out that they've done yet. First of all, the handles are very different, but I'll get to that in a second. But we've also got a blade steel upgrade. As you can see from here on the back, we've got CPM 20 CV, which is a nice upgrade over the standard S30 V. You're gonna get more edge retention. And these are serialized too. So you got that limited edition graphic here on the back with the uh, specific number of the knife you've got as well. Other than that, it's the same great bug out blade. It's nice and thin, has a high flat grind. It's gonna slice exceptionally well. I've been carrying one of our Knife Center exclusive battle wash bug outs lately, and it's just a phenomenally performing everyday carry blade. Now the handles here are G10. Now, this is the first factory G10 handle, I believe, from Benchmade on the bug out. You should get them on, get on them out there. These, these feel really good. They're nice and sturdy. Everybody go tell Benchmade they need to make more G10 for the bug out because it's really nice. But in a bit of a trend we're starting to see, we actually have some translucent G10. They're not calling it Jade G10, they are calling it translucent, but it looks very similar to that Jade material if you're familiar with it. But the way they've built this up, you can see those blue accents kind of poking through the translucentness of the material. And that's because they've laminated a thin layer of blue G10 on the inside or on the bottom and then milled away certain areas to reveal the butterfly, the little bit of a blue border going around. So it's really cool when you kind of look into the knife, you get some, some texture going on inside the knife that looks pretty cool. Definitely something you appreciate if you're gonna use this knife, you're gonna pick it up, adds a certain level of, of 
differentness and a level of uniqueness to your knife that you don't see all, all that much of like this. It's pretty cool. The pocket clip, they've done a little bit of an upgrade to it as well. It has sort of a blackened finish. It's not super black, but it's definitely darker than just the bare metal. And they've given it a nice little stone washed texture that looks pretty cool. Now these are limited, like I said, we expect them to go very quickly. So by the time this video goes up, I'm not even sure if they're gonna be sold out yet or not, but I wanted you guys to see this and I wanted to let you know that this G10 feels good and we hope to see more of that from Benchmade on the bug out in the future. All right, let's change gear now. We've looked at a couple really expensive items. Let's get down back to earth with some affordable stuff. How about another thing with Translucent G10? We've got a new model from CJRB Cutlery. This knife is called the Gobi, and like all of CJRB's stuff, it's really, really nicely priced for what you're getting. We're just $37.95 on this knife. So what actually are you getting for that price? Well, D2 blade steel, we've got a nice upswept profile kind of a Persian inspired trailing point perhaps. A little bit thicker of a blade, we're about eighth of an inch, but we have a high flat grind to keep it, to keep it slicing credentials up. Nice stone washed finish. You guys know I love a stone washed finish because it's gonna hide those scratches as you use the knife. And I just think long-term they look better than a, a high polished or a satin blade will once you've used it. Cause those get all scuffed up and there's something to be said for actually using those pretty tools, but this stone wash blade is gonna be looking nicer longer. Now there are several G10 colors available, but I've pulled the translucent one here. Has that same kind of jade greenish look to it, accented very nicely by some anodized orange accents on the backspacer and the pivot collar. We have a reversible pocket clip on the back. It's folded over, but it's not super deep carry. You have a little bit sticking up, but you can carry that on the left or the right. And we have a liner lock and it's a CJRB. So we get a nice set of bearings in the pivot flips really, really well, especially for less than $40. And that's something these CJRB knives, which they're a subsidiary of Artisan Cutlery. It's built by the same people on the same production lines, just with a production or a uh, production style, just these sandwiched sides and materials that let them get that price down. And the performance is just stunning. CJRB Gobi, $37.95. Next is another CJRB. This one with a kind of broader cleaver style blade. This is the CJRB Rampart. And we've got knives that start at $34.95 in this series with G10, or you can upgrade to carbon fiber for a little more, or you can get this all copper handled model for just $52.95, just a hair over 50 bucks. Same great D2 steel, same great stone washed finish, same great flipping action, but you get that really cool copper color on or copper material on both sides. That copper is also stone washed, so it's gonna, gonna wear in quite nicely, especially when it starts to patina from your, the oils from your hand, from carrying this knife, the, your sweat, getting some use on it. It's gonna look like none other, so you're gonna have something that's exactly your own. And that's why copper's been so popular lately, we think. And it has my stone washed finish on it, so I love it. Anyway, CJRB Rampart, another great knife, all copper for just over 50 bucks. Now for one I've been waiting for to come out for a while. It's the Bird Knives Cara Cara 2 by Spyderco with an officially licensed Emerson Wave opener. Price on this is just $32.50. And what you're getting with this overall design is Spyderco's design language, just with a few different tweaks on it. You get a comet shaped opening hole rather than the, the perfectly circular hole. But otherwise, this is you can essentially think of this as an Endura with a finger choil. That's basically what it is in terms of the size. Blade steel, of course, we've got 8CR13 MOV rather than the VG10 of the Endura, but it's a, the handle's almost identical, the dimensions are identical, but you get the addition of that forward finger choil, that really cool Spyderco feature that I really appreciate on a lot of their blades that lets you choke up right behind the edge of the blade, get some good use out of the entire edge. It's a really cool feature. Blade steel, as I said, was 8CR13. We've got a full flat grind on this knife and that officially licensed Emerson Wave, which that hook, as you draw the knife from your pocket, it can catch on your hem and you can use that hem of your pocket to rotate the blade open as you draw the knife. So you have a really fast deployment. It's ready to go as soon as you pull it out of your pocket. Handles are FRN. We've got a bi-directional texturing, not exactly the same as they do on the Endura, but we've got peaks on here that go in two different directions. So you've got retention both forward and backwards. Mid-mounted lockback with the boy dent 
and a four position pocket clip. Overall, it's a fantastic design. The Endura and Delica and the Caracara and the Bird equivalents of those Spyderco knives are great. You know, they're, they're compact, they're as customizable as you want them to be in terms of where you put the clip, so anyone can carry them. It's not biased to righties or lefties, really cool. And with that Emerson Wave, you can get to it even quicker. Bird Caracara 2 with the Wave, 3250. All right, we're going to kick it back to some higher end stuff and we're going to kick it back to tactical now with a new variant of the Spartan Palace. Now, this is a made in America button locking flipper. We've got S35 VN steel with a black PVD coated Tonto profile. And we're about three and three quarters of an inch, a good fair bit of length on this blade to get some good tactical work done. The handles are aluminum and anodized black. And on the back, you can see we've got a stone washed pocket clip, right side tip up only. This is not reversible. And we get open backed construction, which keeps the weight down a little bit, makes it an easy knife to clean out as well. But what I like about it, you just saw, I can actually flick this knife open and closed just by holding that button down. Allegedly, there we go. My finger got in the way of the flipper there, no big deal. Now in terms of the flipping action, it's not the best, I will admit, the detent could maybe be a little bit stronger, but I don't care personally, because I can do that, which I love that. Ambidextrous, or sorry, not ambidextrous, it's not an axis style lock, but it's very safe because your fingers are gonna stay out of the path of the blade when you're operating the lock, closing the blade up. I really appreciate that. And then you've got the thumb studs as well. Dual thumb studs, pops open real easily. Uh, but the Spartan Blades Palace, Palace, actually not sure how to say that. Someone in the comments, let me know. 290 bucks on this knife right now. All right, this next tactical one is from Microtech. And this is one of his signature series Troodons. And I love this one. It's, the colors on it are fantastic. We've got this really awesome red aluminum handle and it's set off by a bunch of kind of bronze accents. The switch on the side, the hardware here, and especially the stone washed grinds of the blade itself have this subtle bronze coating or this subtle bronze anodized finish. I'm not actually sure how they do it, but it looks awesome against that red of the handle. And we've got a bunch of new Microtex in stock right now. This is just one of them that I pulled because I just found this particular one so striking. And this one right here is at 515. Now the action, super satisfying. Launches out really strong. And as far as this blade profile goes, they call this a Hellhound Tonto blade and couldn't be more apt because that is just a vicious looking profile. Overall, I just love this knife. If I had the cash right now, I'd probably be going home with this because it is a stunning piece. The signature series Troodon, they're not always this nice. Well, they're always nice, but they're not always this sort of blinged out. I love it, 515 right now. So Tony Marfione from Microtech is definitely a very well-known tactical designer, but so is Rick Hinderer, and we've got a new knife from him this week as well. And it's a small fixed blade, a little neck knife called the LP1. It's a very lightweight knife. You can see we're very skeletonized. About a two and a half finger grip for my hands. S35 VN steel, made in America, with a nice little drop point shape. But there's a little bit something special going on with the, the profile here. He could have very easily just dropped that point. But instead, with this little kick here, it creates something a little bit different, something interesting to look at. But you don't sacrifice the usability of that drop point profile at the same time. Stonewashed finish. Love my stonewash. And the edges are all nice and comfortable. The tumbling process actually removes any of those sharp corners, so it holds in the hand very well. Blade itself is just under two inches, we're about 1.9. Good enough to do some day-to-day -day tasks, anything you need to get done in a pinch. And speaking of getting things done in a pinch, we've actually got a hex driver here in the handle of the knife. Now it's not a super tight fit, it is a little bit loose, but it works very well. Although we would recommend sticking it in the sheath before you actually go to twist on anything. But the sheath, as since we're talking about it, Kydex, ball chain there on the end. Simple, just what you need. LP1 from Rick Hinderer, 175 right now. Next up, we've got a Fancy Boy, a new Mazarin AM5. This is the 375 KT variant of that knife. This is a showpiece for sure with a really awesome engraved blade. We've got some actual 24 karat gold flower inlays along with the scroll work that's going on there. Uh, M390 steel too, so if you were to use this knife, 
you'd get some good edge retention, but I dare say this might be a, a safe queen. Now, if you're looking for an extra special gift this year, the price on this is $362.95. So this isn't for the faint of heart, but this is a phenomenal piece to give to that special someone in your life. But we've talked about the blade a lot. Uh, it is certainly cool. We've got that crown spine. This is an Italian made knife, but the handles are really cool as well. They're constructed with carbon fiber and we've got titanium inlays as well. And they are inlaid a little bit too. You can actually see the cutout in the, in the scales there for them to sit in so they aren't just sticking up proud of the carbon fiber. But what a cool look. Um, it's a flipper knife. We've got a liner lock. Nice flipper tab that sticks up. So even if it's closed, there's, not, uh, there's nothing protruding there. You have nice clean lines. And just an, a really graceful, simple, but graceful shape, I think. And I love it. Could be yours right now for $362.95. All right, another fancy one, and we're climbing up the price ladder up, uh, climbing up the price ladder a little bit again. This is the Shiragorov Hati R for $8.95. Now we've got a big batch of new Shiros in right now. This is just one of them, but I've always loved this model and I love these Alutex handles. Looks like carbon fiber, but it's not. It is, like I said, Alutex is what it's called. But what's really cool about this knife that's evident as soon as you pick it up, even though we've got three and th or almost four inches of M390 steel on the blade, this is a very lightweight knife. That Alutex, of course, like carbon fiber, is very lightweight. Blue color looks really cool too. And the titanium on the back, if we can get a shot of on the inside, we'll see how well we can do. But they've milled out a lot of pockets and a lot of channels on the inside of the titanium to remove a lot of weight. And just, it's stunning how, exactly how lightweight this large knife is. We're only at about three, or sorry, just 4.1 ounces, which, come on. I mean, that's like carrying nothing in your pocket, but you still have nearly four inches of that great steel. It is a Shiragorov, so the action is great, as is the fit and finish. The attention to detail is some of the best you can get out there. And it really, I think, justifies the price for those of you who truly appreciate something that's next level and this is one of the more expensive ones of the new, newest batch we've got in. We've got uh, other models, not just this Hati, that are a little bit less expensive, so you can get that same great world-class attention to detail. I mean, just as far as down, all the way down to how thin they keep the edges on these knives. They're just fantastic. Shiragor of Hati are. So admittedly, that is a lot of money, but if you like that blade shape, don't want to spend quite as much, how about something from Real Steel? Not exactly the same, not quite the same length, but very close. This knife is called the Megalodon, and the price is $67.50 on this blade. And actually, like holding it up side by side with that Shiragorov, sharpened edge is just about the same. We're about 3.9 inches of blade on here. 14C28N steel with a really heavy stonewashed finish. I've been saying it a lot this, this video. I love that stonewash, and I love how heavy this is. This is kind of like the... Um, it almost looks like it's been parkerized or, or patinaed a little bit. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more of a matte finish than a typical satin finish blade that is then stonewashed. So you have a really rugged, a really rough and tumble look. And I love that 14C28 as well. It's a nice fine grained Swedish steel, takes a really fine edge, holds it a good long while, and is still easy to sharpen. It's a great working steel, I think. And this is a great working knife. Because if you go back, we've actually got black micarta handles. This is not a G10 handled knife. Now that micarta is going to give you a little bit more raw grip than you might get with a G10 handle, especially if the situation starts to get grimy or wet, because the just the very surface of the micarta, whenever it gets wet, always seems to be a little bit tackier than when it's dry. Uh, so that's a great feature. It's a great material on a working knife. And another great safety feature, another great option for a hard working knife. We've actually got a little piece right here. At first glance, it looks like it might be jimping, but this is actually an, an additional safety lock to this liner locking knife. When the knife is open, just put your thumb there, slide it forward, make sure it clicks all the way into place, and that liner lock is not gonna disengage. Pretty cool, very unobtrusive, because your, your thumb is already right there, so it's easy to engage and disengage. does not engage automatically, so you don't ever have to use it if you don't want to. Flip, lock, get to work, unlock, unlock. 
I really like the way they've integrated it, it there. Uh, it's a little more seamless than a lot of other companies have done that sort of thing. Intuitive and very easy to use because of the placement. I like it. I like it a lot. The pocket clip is a single position clip. This is a right side tip up clip, but the finish matches that cool heavy stone wash of the blade. And actually the liners match that as well. We've got skeletonized liners here that are a good thickness. They provide good lockup on that liner lock. Overall, the Megalodon at this price with this steel, this material, $67.50 is a really good bargain and a really great working knife. All right, one more for you today. Now you've actually seen this model before. This is the Dog Bite All Around, but we've got a bevy of new colors in stock right now. Price on these is $99.95 and we get 440 steel with a drop point profile, a little bit over four inches in length, but the star are these handles and they're made out of kieranite and, if, and like I said, a bunch of different colors. This one here is toxic green and black. We've also got a new orange color, uh, just a bunch of great stuff to choose from. And these are not just a good looking handle, they're very comfortable as well. I mean, that contouring is perfect on this knife, at least for my hands. It fits, even though this is a smaller knife, it's not a super broad handle, it just locks into my hand. And with a name like All Around, it better be able to do a lot of stuff, and I definitely think this can. Good everyday carry if you like to carry a little bit larger of a fixed blade. Great for anything outdoors. You could do some bushcraft with this, be a great hunting or fishing knife, camp chores, any of that stuff. Materials are good uh, at, at $99.95 or just under $100. Uh, you can get better steel in that price range, but you're going to be hard pressed to get a steel that's a good all-around performer like 440C that has handles that look and feel this good. Comes with a leather sheath too. It's a raw leather, it's not been dyed. So you can treat that in a couple of different ways. This is part of how they keep the price where it is on this knife. So you can go in, you can apply your own waterproofing to it if you want, which will change the color. You can dye it if you want, or you can just wear it around like so. And like the copper on that CJRB, it's gonna kind of take on the character of your adventures that you've taken this knife on. And there's a lot to, to appreciate about these knives. Check them out, dog bite all around, just under a hundred bucks. So that's just some of the new stuff that's hit our shelves this week, but I think some of the coolest stuff that's hit our shelves this week. If you wanna get your hands on any of them, we've got links in the description where you can head over to knifecenter.com. And don't, be, don't forget to follow the link to our Instagram post on that MKM for that giveaway too. We'd love to have you join us and we'd love to give you a chance to win that great knife. I'm rambling now, it's fine. It's been a long week over here. We've still got a ton of Cyber Week deals going. You can check all of that out at knifecenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson signing off. See you next time. Yay. You can do that again, Actually. except not say a special dad or grandpa in your knife. <laughs> Mobilize my people. Oh, I can't build links if you don't say it correctly. <laughs> Finger grip. Finger grip. Reset for beans. Beans! Beans!